didn't seem like they needed to be there. They didn't help. My favorite part was the pool of, and I am jumping around here because, like I said, I didn't do this in order. My favorite part was the pool of reincarnation. That was fun. But, again, even even as of today, I'm still, this is a week off of, of the death of Chad Gaspar, and I'm wondering if they should have pulled it out of respect for him to do a, a drowning gimmick after a real pro wrestler just really fucking drowned. It's like, I, I love... I love the whole thing, and yes, they probably had it written up, but they didn't shoot it, at least from what I've heard, until Friday. Oh. So they easily could have cut that out and not done it. Even if you had pre-shot it, I think you could have cut it out. Uh-huh. It was my favorite part. I loved it. I loved every second of Matt changing and everything, and the guys just, you know, and and I, I think it was Ortiz. I don't remember who it yeah, was. it was said, Ortiz. I can't swim. I can't swim. I can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck in there, God damn it. It's, it's like three feet deep. Yeah, I get your ass. Like, I, I loved the whole thing. So yeah. I, 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 that's why I'm torn. It's like part of me is like, yeah, be respectful. And part of me is like, but this is your ace in the fucking hole. So that's I'm torn I, about Santana and Ortiz with that. because I, I loved them in Impact as the badasses they were. And now they're here and they're funny. And I love it. But I miss them from Impact. Right. I hope when they break away that they get back into that. Yeah. Um. I oh, I did put in here. I called Matt. Um. Not Matt Hardy. I called Matt Buck flipping off the goalpost. I called it last week. <laughs> I said he's fucking injured, and they're still gonna have him come out, and he'll probably do a goddamn flip off the goalpost. <laughs> and damned if he didn't do a moonsault off the goalpost. Don't do a moonsault off, <laughs> salt off the goalpost, Matt. You're fucking injured. Don't that thing's do a it. lot less stable than it looks like. It moved a lot. Oh, God. That scary. That was a scary spot. Well, yeah, that's a very big, wide thing that's held by just a tiny... And then wasn't it uh, him who, can, yeah. who who went on to do the fucking the, the full football field worth of super? It was, and I'm going to get to that, with too. With those because... ribs. Either that, that injury might have been fake, you know, I guess, just to... Uh... You know, I don't think it is. I mean, it could have been, but I don't think it is. Um, Sammy sleeping was weird. That was fucking weird. He was definitely the weak link in the match, I don't remember and him sleeping. I, I guess. He was, uh, and he really fell flat. You don't remember him sleeping because fucking um, Hangman even drove, uh, rode a fucking line over him with the chalk. Oh yeah, while yeah. he's sitting there fucking sleeping. Um, he was knocked bring, out, wasn't he? <sighs> He might have been. He's just fucking laying there asleep. I don't know what the fuck he was knocked out from. Last time I seen him, he was fucking running away from a horse. The next thing I see, he's sleeping, and a drunk hangman page comes out, which, by the way, a drunk hangman page was weird, and uh, and I didn't think that the whole thing with him and doing the – it didn't work, him coming out drunk and just doing the striper on – a sleeping Guevara was just, it's just weird. I don't know. It's, Not, it's to me, funny. none of that worked. Yeah. Well, I mean, you just, it's I, funny I it as a comedy show. Really? I but loved, then, I loved after it, they beat up Hager in the bar too. And they shared, you want a drink? Mega's like, yeah. And they poured, he poured him a glass of milk and he poured him a glass. Yeah. Of whiskey. Their team is amazing. And I want them to last but for a I while. I think this is, I think this is the same problem and I'm, I'm going to jump ahead, but I'm just going to respond to what you said and then move on. The same, this is why I said it's the same thing as uh, Money in the Bank. They didn't know if they wanted to be a comedy show or a wrestling show, and they start, kept cutting it together, but they didn't cut it together well to where it's like, oh, here's some really cool wrestling. Oh, here's funny. Oh, here's some cool wrestling. Oh, here's funny. It it didn't work for me. It worked for people because the Internet is, is on our side, Pasty. 50% of the posts I see loved it. 50% of the posts I see did not like it. So it's like okay, I get it. Um, it's not. For, it isn't for everybody, and I say that about a lot of shit I like. Mm-hmm. I will say the end came out of nowhere and was a pin on the weakest link of the group. So it and it basically didn't resolve anything. I don't know what the one winged angel from Kenny Omega onto Sammy Guevara. That wasn't built up like at all. Yeah, I, I don't think really those two fought each other at all in this whole in no. this whole stadium match. So. I didn't like that. This was fun to be had for fun's sake. But with a feud that was as deep and extreme as this one is, I think there should have been more storyline progression, and I really didn't feel any storylines evolved. And this is where I said in my notes, this show had the same problem with Money in the Bank. Is it wrestling? Is it Gaga? Is this canon? Is this a one-off? Is What is it? I don't oh, think AEW knew what they again. wanted to do. 
And they either, and, and I'll, I'm, I'm going to give some slack to the wrestlers, they either didn't edit it very well to save the shit show, or, well, and not, it wasn't a shit show, but to, to save, to make it look good, or either they edited it too much and ruined it. I, See, I don't know. I had I had issue with the fact that there was a lot of stuff that happened inside the stadium, and then it has me questioning, well, what's going on out by the by the ring, you know? Nothing right. for, for seven, eight minutes at a time at times. Like, it. It was weird how they'd stay on location for so long. But I love the Matt Hardy stuff with the pool. But after the pool, my favorite was when he did the Bugs Bunny doctor thing with the wheelchair and put Ortiz in the wheelchair. Oh, prescribe I forgot. Until tomorrow, take two of these and call me in the morning. Like, I oh forgot about that. That was awesome. I loved the it. The bell uh, was a little weak. Like, I was like, that's kind of dumb. It makes it sense was. for Matt Hardy. But, but that was like... As a yeah. transition between those two awesome jokes, though, uh, it was okay. It worked. <laughs> um, I, I do have two things I think could have improved this greatly. One, take away two or three wrestlers from each team. Cut down how many people the cameras try and follow. That kind of is the same point you had. And that's kind of the same point I had with the, that I think we both had with Money in the Bank. Is like they would stick on one thing for so long and nobody gives a shit what's happening with the rest of the eight, ten people. What's sad is I don't even remember much Money in the Bank anymore beyond the McMahon room. You're not, Pasty, <laughs> in a, a week or two, you're not going to remember much of this other than the fucking reincarnation lake and the bar scene. So don't feel I, bad. I had a lot it's of the fun same. With this. I had a lot you had fun of with it, but you're not going to remember anything. Nothing stood out. Well, the other I'll go thing back I have. Watch it when I forget. <laughs> the other thing I have is cut 10 to 14 minutes off of this 34 fucking minute match. If you would have taken away two to three wrestlers from each and cut 10 minutes off of it or 14 minutes, I think you really could have edited it down to a really good either a Falls Count Anywhere wrestling match or a really fun Gaga cinematic comedy show. Basically, you, you could have edited it down to like a, an episode of Being the Elite. That was just kind of fun. Yeah. And, and I would have been I think I would have been well, okay with that. they had a that. whole Being the Elite about this. I didn't watch it because oh, of did. other things going on. <laughs> yeah, I didn't watch but it But you can bet it would be, I bet there's match stuff in it that you didn't get to see in the, in the actual match, like cut scenes. Um, we got to give, stop before we move on. I know you want to move on and shit, but this, there's so much happening in this match. We got to stop and give a moment to the comedic genius that is Chris Jericho. When he got that two count and challenged the ref, <laughs> saying it was a three count, and they go into the review booth, I didn't. I didn't like that. What? I loved it. I did. Well, again, because to me, that only works if this is a complete, if this is a complete comedy match. If they're, you know, but it, they were selling it. You know, he he did that and he challenged it, but then Kenny Omega did a one winged angel and won. Then why wasn't there a flag called it? Why wasn't there a challenge? It was on this, you know, like I, it didn't, it was thrown in there just because they were on a football field. I felt, I didn't feel like it had anything to do with the match. I don't know. I thought it took away from it. I, I didn't understand why he's challenging it other than they're on a football field. You know what I mean? Now, if like somebody's, leg would have been under a rope or something which I guess they had a ring there that could have done it then I guess the challenge would have made sense I don't know uh, that one I didn't like I thought it fell flat so here pasty I'm, I'm going to give you a little uh, just to let you know I'm not just shitting on the match I'm going to compare it to the Boneyard match and to the uh, Money in the Bank match if you look at the Boneyard match it was a real match set in a gimmick cinematic universe. Uh, oh, not Money in the Bank, Firefly. You look at the Firefly Funhouse, fully cinematic production that peppered in some wrestling context. Little bit. The Boneyard match had things we would see in a real match, but was exaggerated. Multiple mas masked men came in to attack um, The Undertaker. In a real match, you see that. Look at the NWO, Corporate Ministry, Dark Order, Aces and Eights. Here we just saw Druid's attack Undertaker, but the walls of the barn fell and exposed them. It's like, oh, cool. They they used the cinematic experience to make a real match thing look better. In a real match, horses aren't running into the ring to chase people down. Wrestlers don't hang out at the bar and have drinks. Drunks aren't painting sleeping wrestlers. 
Cuts aren't made to imply the passage of time. And yes, I'm talking about the German suplexes, which was fun, but we all seen where you it was know going. They and stopped I think it and got, got up and walked. Down. Oh yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, they, they they did three of them. They did three sets of them, and they that's what I'm saying. Like cut, cuts were made to imply the passage of time, which was cute and fun for this match, but you're not going to see that in a pro wrestling match. It was really beyond suspension of disbelief. Now you look at the Firefly Funhouse, there were a few wrestling moments that were presented in memories or not really actually happening. They were like fake. They were just illusions. Mm. So I really just don't know what AEW implied. All these events were... <sighs> I, I That's the part that I think is the, the disconnect. It was either... It's one or the other. It's Honestly, can't be and both. yeah, when I look at it, the best parts were the comedy parts. And then you look at the deletion saga, and those were, and I'll, I'll, I'll admit, hit or miss sometimes. Some of them weren't as great as others. But they did portray real wrestling matches using the Hardy compound in extravagant ways. And for the most part, it worked. And the stadium showdown did this a bit also the field goal moonsault the pool of reincarnation fighting yeah, in the you stands could definitely tell that the matt hardy stuff was like that was the broken section of this thing oh yeah watching. the one winged ang- ang- angel out of the balcony like these are things these are things that you know work they were they were wrestling but they were uh-huh. connected and why would you and, do uh, the one winged angel out of the balcony when moxley just did kind of the same thing with brody lee's face yeah that, that actually that, i didn't think of that but that's a good point that was a complaint i had at the finish too but like i said i look back at it i love the comedy part that's that's what i was there for i you know what if they cut it down into a comedy thing i, I would have liked it a lot better if they would have cut it down into a false count anywhere match i think i would have liked it better i think it was just I don't think they mixed it well. I don't think they mixed it well. Um, before we move on, I do want to shit on JR. <laughs> he was off all night. You already mentioned a couple things. Um, I do want to mention he accidentally called the TNT title the TNA championship, which which is an easy mistake to make, and, and I have no problem with him doing it. Honest mistake. I, I, I get that. The problem was how he handled it. Afterwards, he kept bringing up the mistake. He even joked that he felt he might be getting fired about it. But he said it in a very, like, depressed, salty tone. And it was obvious, like, he's worried about the Internet people just going to town on him. Like they do. But that's kind of what he seemed to do on the show was kind of just own it more. Yeah, he didn't seem to own it, though. He felt like he was, like, like, he was just expect. I don't know. He also (laughs) kept cutting off Tony and Excalibur. And uh, one of his one of his rude interruptions was noticed by more than just me. This was when Excalibur was building up something. I don't I don't even remember what he was doing, but I remember just in the middle of Excalibur talking, Jr. goes, "You sold enough, good job," and then just starts going on to something else. And he literally on Pro Wrestling Tees Jr. store has a new shirt called "You Sold Enough, Good Job." <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't know. JR just seemed kind of off that night, like just in a grumpy mood. <clears throat> I don't know. We like grumpy JR though. Oh, yeah. I will say that. I'm I, I'm gonna say Excalibur is starting to come into his own. I think I think the, the 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 announce booth seems to have a lot more fun now than it was when it was more stressful in the beginning. Oh, this three man booth, <laughs> especially when they got rid of uh, Mark Mark Marquis Mark Marquez. Uh, Tony Khan's best friend, Marquez. The original announcer, remember Marquez? Oh yeah, yeah. I can't guy. think of his yeah, I can't think of his first name. Um, I don't think it matters. <laughs> it it, it, it does oh uh, it, it really doesn't, but it's like, yeah. Especially when they got rid of him, it's like you could tell he was just hired because he's Tony Khan's best friend. Get the fuck yeah, out of here. Yeah. Um, best match of the night, Pasty? Oh, you can go with the stadium. Go for it. I'm okay with that. But you see, I got to go with John Brody. I'm okay with that even more. Stadium Stampede was a whole lot of fun, but to me that was like, uh, it would be like the lights out match, you know, where it doesn't matter because it's like the bonus match. Great. Uh, Mox and Brody, though, tore the house down. They sweat so much. A lot of those spots had to be so hard because there was no grip. <laughs> yeah, both no of shit. them had Legit. like beads 
covering their bodies. These guys worked hard. And yeah.